Hello, and welcome to Translating Tabular Data Maps into a Fire Implementation Guide. I'm Jay Lyle. I'm a consultant with JP Systems. My primary client is the U.S. Veterans Administration. And I'm Michael Fendersel, and I'm a fire enthusiast. All right. um, I'm going to give a run through of the problem we're facing, and then Michael's going to talk about the solution we came up with. We are pulling legacy data out of the VA's EHR called VISTA, and we're exposing it in fire resources for consumption by a pharmacy application. You'll see five boxes here, not just the two, uh, because there's an integration engine in the middle called HealthShare. Uh, there's an extract tool that pulls the data out of VISTA for HealthShare. Um, and then there are fire resources between the HealthShare and the pharmacy application. And each of those arrows is being managed by a different technical team. So the idea was we would have a um, standards uh, support team to provide the maps that ought to be coming out of this game of telephone so that when we get to the fire resources and we compare it to what's in Vista, uh, we know what to expect and we can confirm that the various operations in the middle didn't distort or um, impose um, unnatural constraints on the data. The input we have is a list of fields. So we did not have detailed use cases with operations um, which is okay. Uh, the use case is fairly simple. It's a read-only application. Um, so uh, what we came up with was a list. We took this list of requirements and for each element in the list, we provided instructions. And the instructions were detailed enough for developers to understand. They did not need to be machine processable. So they, they um, sometimes use different um, orthography and different levels of detail. Um, and for as example, I have a, a screenshot of some of the data in that table. Um, and you'll see the blue columns are uh, represent the requirements that we want to, to, to support, um, patient status, um, order numbers, that sort of thing. And then the orange columns represent what we said, um, especially that, that last one um, that says uh, Stu3 map, that is the, um, what we're telling them to do. Um, but in this resource, um, in the Stu3 resource column, and in this field, in the Stu3 map column. And some of them are quite simple. Um, yes, you want to put the um, patient um, in the uh, medication request dot subject field, um, and some of them require more um, detail. For instance, if you have an identifier, you need an identifier system. So there are parameters um, and other sorts of things. It, it, it's going to get a little more complicated. Um, I'm going to come back to this topic in a moment. Um, when we need to start making this um, processable, but we'll, we'll move ahead for the moment. Um, and the idea is that if we're going to be doing all this work, we would really like to have an, an implementation guide. Um, the purpose of using FHIR in the first place, rather than just a point-to-point -point, uh, interface, is that it will support um, interoperability in the future. Um, in addition, um, it allows us to bring uh, more partners into the loop of the review of the data rather than having to teach everyone how to read our spreadsheet. Uh, we can just publish a guide and people can read it. Um, and a uh, free benefit of this also is that we get the IG publisher tooling and the validator um, tooling for free to make sure that we didn't do anything wrong. There are a couple of issues we face. Uh, first of all, the platform was due three, so we can't use FISH. Um, there's a government department um, constraint here. Um, it's hard to get um, some sort of um, bureaucratic things done um, quickly or at all. Um, and, and there's some other kinds of issues we faced. But the basic um, concept we came up with was we can take this table and we can come up with a script that will infer our resource profiles from that list. And now I'm going to turn it over to Michael to tell you a little bit more about what that looks like. Yes, hi. So I will talk about the solution pipeline that takes the, the table or the list of around 900 mappings and converts them into uh, fire structure definitions that are then uh, the input uh, for uh, IG publication uh, or the IG publisher tool. So, so there's a couple of steps in the pipeline, uh, um, mainly the uh, rectangular uh, things in the diagram. Um, first up is getting the list on the left uh, in an easy computable format for the script. So we choose uh, Excel XML for that. It's easy to process. 
And then there are three scripts, and I will go into each of them. So after generating, oh, and after generating the 260 or so structure definitions uh, based on the 900 mappings, um, the, I often use the official official fire validator to check the output before I was going to run the IG publisher. So and this is that's all the steps in the script. So script one. So we started with just one Node.js script uh, that takes the list rows uh, from the Excel, uh, which are basically mappings from Vista files, as Jake showed in the table, and fields and fixed values, and generated structure definitions that are then uh, input for the IG publisher. So this initially uh, resulted in a long list of errors and warnings, so that we knew that there are a lot of things that we um, did wrong. So often it also even crashed the IG publisher with, with big exceptions. And that, that had to do with the development of the IG publisher, but also of things we put in because it was generated from the Excel. So we had to figure out what caused all the errors and how to fix them or, or prevent them or give guidance on how to fix them to the, uh, to the inner tables. So the type of errors were, among things, uh, invalid characters in the paths, so, and not existing paths, or missing type information, uh, for, for example, for the fixed values. So there's a lot of extra information that we had to find somewhere. So for the uh, invalid characters, it was an easy place, because inside the fire specs, there are uh, regular expressions defined that, that check the path names. So that one was easy to prevent. So we could tick that off of our list. So to figure out if the path is valid and if the types and what the types of each path was, uh, we had to find a um, good computable source of the fire specifications. So and convert that into something I could use in the script. Uh, and that's where script two is, uh, plays a role. So it turns out that the fire specifications are downloadable at, uh, from the fire specifications itself as a zip file with structure definitions. So next, I had to create an algorithm that expands those uh, structure definitions um, um, into a long part, list of parts. So I implemented the algorithm as a node script, um, and the result is a list of expanded paths up to one level, mind you, because some of the paths actually are recursive because of things in the data types. So you have to take that into account. Um, also, I got the type information in it and, and the order of uh, elements. And I will come back to why I need the order later. So script two is now finished. Um, I, I, script one can uh, use the output of script two to validate the paths and add the type information. Uh, so uh, for example, for observation value X. And so we are happy and now we'll want to see what happened with the IG publisher. And yes, we got a publication done with the expected info in there. And still a lot. Uh, 300 plus QA errors and warnings. So we were a little bit happy and a little bit not happy because there's more things to figure out. So uh, it turns out, and I should have known that reading the specs, that the order of the elements inside the fire resources are significant. And actually we also found out uh, that even the order of the differential elements are significant. So that's where script three comes in. The script implements uh, the sorting algorithm. It uses the, the order information from the specs, from the uh, script two, uh, to do the sorting of the differential elements. Uh, for the sorting of the structure definition elements itself, which I mixed up a little bit, um, I use the Lantana Fire Node.js library that does the trick for that. So, I didn't go into all the things that script one does, but for example, it also sets fixed values, uh, adds type information. It also creates and uses extensions where needed based on the mapping spreadsheet. 
um, and it does a first go try on doing fixed values in extensions, uh, which which is still an open issue because we we're unclear on how exactly how to do that. Um, another thing is uh, chain profiles uh, with references, which it also handles. Um, and so more than enough to, to fill more talks, but we don't have time for that. But the result of all these things, so script one, script two, and script three, is that yes, we now get a publication with almost no QA errors. So uh, we are really happy because it's now just 16 errors as opposed to 300, which we initially had. And, and the best part of it is that most of those 16 errors are, um, we understand, we, they are explainable. So we know uh, how to go, go on with that. So over to lessons learned, and I want to say my lesson learned first, and that's chat.fi.org is your friend. And there's a lot of good responses there and people that help you when you have questions. And now we're back to Jack. Thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, we won't go through all these lessons. We'll let anyone bring up questions about specific things if they want. Um, my, my main was that the analyst friendly list idea um, is difficult. That lists, lists designed for people are hard for computers to consume and, and vice versa. We had that original list. And as, as, um, as you may have noticed, as, as I was showing it, um, some of those um, identifiers had, had letters next to them um, that a, a requirement that maps to a fire element that also has constraints sometimes has to be split into two rows. So instead of having one row to tell us where the order status is, we'll have one row to tell us how to map the order status into the required fire status field, and a second row to tell us, oh, and then create this extension because you need more information than fire supports for that. Or as Michael mentioned, um, if we use a reference, um, and there's a path that crosses uh, from one resource to another, uh, that also needs to be split in two so that we can uh, clarify that the first row tells you what secondary profile to use to record that element, and the second row tells you in that secondary profile where the element shows up. So the, the list that we wound up with uh, supports the script, but it's a, a great deal more difficult for the analyst to read. Um, I don't think that that completely um, nullifies its value, but it does It does mean that, yes, we do not have the, the silver bullet um, list format that, that supports both analyst um, readability and um, computability. That is the content of our presentation. We um, are asked, we uh, thank you for coming and we can answer any questions. Hey everyone, this is Bryn Evans from HL7. I've got Mike Vanderzeel and Jay Lyle here to answer your questions. Jay? Thank you. Um, yes, this is Jay Lyle. I see we have one question in our chat. Um, using the SDA model imposes another layer of translation. Could you consider using something else that would be more direct? Um, well, I think there's, there's really two answers. Um, I, I did not, I was brought in later. That's a decision that was made. So um, the, the other, um, the, the reason for using the STA layer is that it, it is a integration engine that you know can, can be point to many different formats. So it will support translation into fire or to CDA. Um, there may be others, um, but so having you know sort of the magic central data model is, is always a lovely thing but of course it does mean you've got yet another data model um, so yes that that's that's been an issue um, but I'm not really sure we have a way around it does that answer the question So I had a question, um, as, as Michael mentioned, we have places where we have extensions that might be reused. And if you use the same extension in two different profiles, we may have different um, fixed values for them. Um, for instance, um, you know, a phone type or an address type. Um, and we're having difficulty specifying that in, in, um, in our structure definitions. 
And we're wondering if anyone on the call has, has hit that problem and, and if they have a solution. <laughs> One second. Yeah, that did answer my question about the SDA3. I mean, I mean I <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Yes. Everything okay here? Until I do first. Is it in GitHub? It might be. Uh, it might be one more. It might be the project is in GitHub. Um, can we share the URL in the chat? You probably can. If you you can probably get to it faster than I can. Yes, I mean it's, it's um, the Charlie three eight seven. Uh, yes. Oh, just the chat. Where is the chat? Oh, in the in the yeah. Got it. Yes. I have too many windows open. So use the, the project. So this is the source. No, I don't have the password. So it, it might not be um, usable without explanation yet, but at least you can find all the stuff there. We, yeah, we we, 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 we we, we, we talked about what it would mean to, to do a um, one of the other sort of tooling sessions with, with, with the script, but then we thought, well, then we'd be signing up to support a product, which we, we can't do, but, but we can certainly, you know, um, share the, the script that we have. Yeah. So yesterday we had a pop talk. I don't know if people joined it, but um, I reckon that this is something that people are really looking for and that's different ways of solving. I want to enter it. Sorry, someone trying to ask a question? I think it's an open mic. Yeah, that was, it was interesting. I wasn't able to stay very long. Um, not everyone creates profiles. I just watched the V2 mapping um, Hans's presentation and there's no profile there. It's just the maps. Um, but again, we're hoping to support 2A in the future. Yep. So I guess if there's no questions. We may be done. All right. Thanks guys. That was awesome. And this recording will be posted in Whova, so anyone who wants a copy can grab one there and, you know, enjoy the event, and we'll see you all later. Thank you, Brent.